equipment, when you must go out to work or to buy essentials, wear a mask. Keep your distance from people. Wash your hands. Sanitize your hands as frequently as you can. Second hard fact of the day, you can still get vaccinated. Go to your primary health care center, the ones closest to you, and uh, and get it done. Um, if you don't want to go to a, private, uh, a primary health care center, private hospitals in the state have partnered with uh, the government to administer the vaccine. But if you go to them, you're going to pay some money. So you can either do it for free at the primary health care centers or you pay 6,000 naira at a private uh, facility. The 6,000 you're paying is for all the incidentals that, uh, you know, they would require for the vaccination. So the syringes, the uh, tissue, the labor itself, you know, it's a private clinic. With the government clinics, government is already paying for all of that, subsidizing all of that. But with private clinics, someone has to pay for that, you know, and that's you with 6,000 naira. Still heavily subsidized in my opinion. Thank you for tuning in to the show. I have a great show. I have a great one for you. We'll start with the big three. Let's talk about the high court uh, ruling that the federal government cannot issue marriage licenses or run marriage registries. We're going to go deeper into this story. You know that this is the place to come for serious analysis beyond the headlines. That's how I make sure that one million negotiations cannot be wrong when you discuss these topics outside. Then let's talk about the BBC Africa Eye documentary on the Black Axe Gang. And then we'll talk about the detention and release of Fisayo Shoyomwo yesterday. Uh, Chikudi will bring you Community Euro Report uh, from 4 o'clock. I love that show. You should listen when he's here from 4 p.m. On the big hard fact, like I've been saying since yesterday, let's talk about assisted reproductive technologies. So IVF, surrogacy. Let's talk about why some Nigerians still attach a stigma to these miraculous solutions. As usual, we'll have updates at the top of every hour. Listen to every minute of this show because there's always something happening and always always some greatness popping off and you don't want to miss any of it. For instance, we've got 12 Days of Christmas kicking off today, Cutsy Golden Penny. Uh, it will start at 5. If you are the first winner on the show today, you're going to get a fantastic gift. From tomorrow, they're going to be giving away recharge cards. So make sure that you win uh, one of the gifts from the 12 Days of Christmas. I'm excited. Are you? Let's get started with today's big three. I'm Sandra Ezekwasili. If you just tuned in, these are your hard facts. This is the big three. The big three. On the hard facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. If you got married at the Koyi Registry, are you married? <laughs> Why has government been unable to stop the growth of cultism? Is reporting a story a crime? Those are your big three. Lagos, let's talk. The federal high court says the federal government cannot issue marriage licenses. That's our first story. Uh, this is the latest in a battle between the federal government and some local governments. The local governments have been saying that it's illegal for the federal government to run marriage registries since the constitution gives the power over marriage licenses to the local governments. And now the high court has agreed. It has ordered the federal government to close down all federal marriage registries. For Lagosians, that specifically means the ECOE registry but there's more there's more this judgment may call into question the validity of marriages that the federal government conducted before now may capital letters may because if a registry was illegal can the marriage that comes from that registry be considered legal most of the newspapers and legal blogs have reported on this story and they seem to believe that the marriages are null and void. So I read that and I said, okay, let me, let me consult with our lawyer friends of the show to give you a better legal context into this decision. Because I know that many of you were married at the Federal Registry, so you're directly affected by this. So I got in touch with Ojuka, I got in touch with Ilemona uh, Onoja, and I got in touch with uh, Liboros Oshoma. 
Ojoka said, assuming the ruling says what is being reported, then yes, it means marriages conducted by registries other than those empowered by law are null and void. That said, I also expect the court to apply some discretion in coming to such conclusion. Instead of declaring all such marriages as null and void, which would strictly be the right decision in law, they might just decide not to do so, but to hold that federal registries cannot validly conduct marriages and also leave for individual parties to approach the court to declare their own marriages no, uh, uh, their own marriages are null and void, end quote. So that's what Ojuk has said. He's a lawyer. Uh, Ilemon Onoja, another lawyer, said, uh, quote, I think it means they are voidable, not that they are void. The marriages can be voided at the specific instance of one or both of the parties, but they are not automatically void by reason of the judgment, end quote. So if you notice, Uka and Onoja are disagreeing a little bit. They both agree that the ruling is grounds to void a marriage done at uh, a federal registry. But they disagree on whether those marriages are already void or if one or both of the married people has to approach the court and claim the marriage is void. But Libor Soshoma disagrees completely. He said, quote, there is what is called presumption of regularity in law. The judge cannot, by fiat, uh, uh, nullify all previous marriages contracted in that registry, end quote. Now, from all of this, one thing is clear, even if nothing else is clear. <laughs> Such a monumental ruling should be accompanied with very clear, very detailed description of how it affects the thousands of people who got married in federal registries. Is it true that their marriages are already void? But let's say for the sake of argument that it's true. That would mean that thousands of marriages, many of them having produced children, many of them old children, are suddenly null and void. Null and void for no fault of the couple's. I mean, well, you could argue that they should have read the Constitution to know that federal government cannot marry them. But I mean, come on. Now, my question is, what next for those couples? Should they now go to the local government and get a new license? Should the local governments be ready to do a swap where if you come with your federal marriage license, they'll issue a backdated local government marriage license? Should people pay twice? Should the federal government be held responsible for the costs? Should there be like a class action against the federal government? Will the money they paid at these federal registries be refunded? Should the courts step in and declare some sort of doctrine of necessity here basically uh say oh we understand that strictly under the law these marriages are void but because of the severe harm such a ruling would cause because of the presumption of regularity when these people got married let's recognize these past marriages as binding i don't know would, would such a decision sit well with you if you're a lawyer i would really love to hear from you uh, on today's show honestly and here's another question, perhaps the most important question of, of, of all the questions I've asked today. How did this happen? How is it possible that nobody in the entire federal government was able to realize that they did not have the right to issue marriage licenses? How did this fact slip past the Ministry of Interior? Legos, talk to me. How should this ruling affect married couples? Were you married at a federal registry? Women call me on 01465-7190. Men call me on 0700-993-993-993-01465-7190. For the men, 0700-993-993-993. It's a bit funny. That's why you're hearing laughter in my voice. We've got WhatsApp as well. WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. Someone joked that uh, it means that Lagos men have not been lying. Every every time they meet a young woman and they say, I'm not married. You know, they, they were not lying because apparently look at. But not joke, not joke. Now, person joke. I'm, I'll just tell you the joke a person tell me. <laughs> 99.3, hello. 
Hello, Sandra. Thanks for calling. Yeah, this is Joseph calling. Welcome, Joseph. Yeah, I really appreciate uh, the program that you are discussing, and uh, and uh, at the same time, the ruling of the court of uh, I mean the High Court. Mm. Oh, I think it's in order. But the fact that uh, before now, a lot of people have seen a uh, Koyi registry as the Alpha and Omega of uh, for, for, for marriage, for married people, just simply because of error or because of the mistake that the uh, embassy, which, uh, American embassy and other foreign embassy are claiming that that is the only that is the only recognized uh, uh, marriage uh, registry that can be acceptable by them. That is why a lot of people go to that re registry to, to claim their, 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 I mean, to do their wedding or to, to register their wedding. I, 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 on many occasions, I've advised a lot of people that your local government uh, marriage registry is, 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 is the right place. Oftentimes, you see people flying from Abuja, flying from Kano, flying from Port Harcourt to Lagos. I'm an Uber driver. I've cancelled a lot of people because of this. I, and I've told them several times that it is, it is, it is, not, uh, it is not right for them to risk their life all the way from every part of Nigeria to come to Ikoyi registry because they want to claim a, 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 a marriage certificate. Hmm. Just on the ground that the embassy, we, we recognize it. How can uh, a foreign embassy not recognize the constitution of Nigeria that empower the local government registry to be the, to be the duly, uh, uh, the, the right place to obtain your marriage certificate? I think all this mis misconception, I, 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 I really, I really appreciate that, that this, I mean, the court of, uh, I mean, the court of, uh, the high court is coming at this time to, to regularize all this mistake. Okay. And uh, I think you are doing the right thing. All right. Thank you very much for calling. 99.3. Hello. Hi, Sandra. Good Th afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for calling. What's your name? My name is Oni. Hi, Oni. I'm somewhere in Lekki. <laughs> Welcome. Please, I have a question. Mm -hmm. what, what is the purpose of Ikoyi Registry? What act, you know, set it up? And then uh, if um, the local government suddenly realize that they are not they are not supposed to be issuing marriage certificates. No, it's the federal government that um, the federal government um, is issuing those certificates via ECOE registry. But it's the local government that should be doing it according to the constitution. Okay, so what 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 is the function of that ECOE registry? Um, well, I mean, it, it was supposed to function. It, it's currently functioning as a registry for the Ministry of Interior, right? That's what it's currently functioning as. But now we have a high court saying that that's illegal, that what they're doing at the moment, it's illegal. The court has now said it's illegal what they're doing, that it should not even exist. Okay, that's, uh, in a nutshell, the Ministry of Interior... And the federal government, they are confused. They don't know what they are doing. Pretty much. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, then. 99.3. Hello. Sorry about that. Call back if you can. If you just tuned in, the Federal High Court says that the federal government cannot issue marriage licenses. It's our first story. So you're early. We still have two stories to go. Now, this particular judgment is the latest in a battle between the federal government and some local governments. The local governments uh, have been saying that it's illegal for the federal government to run marriage registries because constitution gives the power uh, over marriage licenses to the local governments. And this high court um, has agreed with the local governments. It's ordered the federal government to close down all federal marriage uh, registries. And for those of us in Lagos, um, that specifically means the ECOE registry. The judgment may call into question the validity of marriages that the federal government conducted before now. Because if a registry were uh, if, if a registry was illegal, the marriages that come from it may be considered illegal. 
if you look a lot, if you look at a lot of the newspapers that are carrying this story, they are carrying the headline "Null and Void." All marriages uh, uh, contracted uh, in these federal registries null and void. But the lawyers I asked cannot quite agree. So I spoke with uh, Ilemona Onoja and Ojuka. They both um, agree that the ruling is grounds to void a marriage if you were married at a federal registry. So you can say, well, since there's a law saying that the marriage, that um, the registry was illegal to begin with, then we're not married according to, um, we're, not, we're not legally married, right? So you can say that, you have grounds to say that. But they both disagree on whether those marriages are already void or if one or both of the married people has to approach the court and claim that the marriage is void. So Ilemona says that um, um, they're not automatically uh, void by reason of ju judgment, but um, uh, they are voidable. Oji says that, um, you know, um, Marriages conducted by registries uh, other than those uh, empowered by law are null and void, but he expects the courts to apply some discretion in coming to uh, conclusions about that. So he says that instead of declaring all such marriages as null and void, um, they might just decide not to do so, but um, they will say, oh, federal registries cannot validly conduct marriages. And then they will leave it up to you as an individual to decide whether you want to void the marriage or not. But Liboro Soshama disagrees completely. He said that um, there's what is called presumption of regularity in law. He cannot, by fiat, nullify all previous marriages contracted in that registry. So that's what the lawyers are saying. I wonder if there are lawyers who are listening to me who will have a different uh, opinion completely. I would like to hear from them. But yeah, monumental ruling there. The one thing that I mentioned earlier is that a ruling like this should be accompanied with very clear, very detailed descriptions of how it affects thousands of people. Because you're probably listening to me and you were probably married at uh, the Ikoyi registry. What does that mean for you? What does that mean for your marriage? What does this ruling mean for your marriage? For the legal standing of your marriage? Because for the sake of argument, let's say that it is true that your marriage is now uh, void. This would mean that thousands of marriages, a lot of them with adult children, children who have their own children, are suddenly null and void. Null and void for no reason. The couples did not do anything by themselves. Except maybe some people will say, oh, why not read constitution? But I are now. So what's next for them? What's next for the couples? Should they go to local government, get a new certificate? Should local government be ready to do a swap where if you come with your federal marriage license, they will issue you a backdated local government marriage license? Should uh, people pay twice? Should the federal government be held responsible for the costs? Should people sue the federal government in a class action suit? Should the court step in and declare, like I said earlier on, uh, 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 some sort of um, doctrine of necessity? So something along the lines of, okay, we understand, say, you know, under the law, strictly, this is your marriage, you know, be real, no daily gab, but because of the severe harm of, you know, say, your marriage, no daily gab, and because of presumption of regular, uh, regularity, uh, you know, when you marry, we will just recognize this your marriage as binding. But going forward, we don't go if you marry for equity registry and other federal registries. Do you think that that would be a fair decision? Would such a decision suit you? And then the bigger question for me is how did this happen? How? How did we get here? How is it possible that in the entire federal government, and this is not, you know, this administration's fault or the previous administration's fault, because Equal Registry has been there for a long It's a long time. It's been there for a long time. So how is it possible that no one in the entire federal government was able to realize that they did not have the right to issue marriage licenses? Constitution no give you right to do them. How did this fact slip past the Ministry of Interior? 
0-1-4-6-5-7-1-9-0 for women. For men, 0 7 Of course, you can share your thoughts via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 80 959 Hello. Thanks for calling. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name? Good afternoon, Nigeria. Good afternoon. What's your name? Yes. Uh, I believe you can hear me. Yes. What's your name? Okay, this is Emmanuel calling from Osba. Emmanuel, your radio is on. Could you put it off, please? Okay, it's on. Yes. Yes, uh, concerning this, uh, this latest uh, heartbreaking news, mm. I, I think uh, Nigeria, I don't want to use the word that the system is a fraud system, but permit me to use that word. Uh, all of us passed through, we went through our elementary schools social studies, um, basic education, uh, government and civic education, though no longer in the, in the classroom today, that is civic education. All these lawyers, they all went through those classes, they read those classes, so the subjects, they studied them, and somebody allowed that to happen. And the local government system itself, we have been putting in people over and over the years we knew there is a course called the local government uh, local government um, course administrative system where you see all these things written in black and white some colored over the years come on and you are now putting some i think the major thing is this legality of every marriage is ordained by god not by human or declaration in one court in one place or the other that is to my own understanding as long as two people bring themselves together under the subjection of the law of God himself, that this is what is ordained of heaven. It's simple. So whatever the court says today does not affect any marriage conducted even 20 years ago, even yesterday. Now, I want to see it this way, that any law that came before something or an event, that law starts from that. It does not affect anything behind that law. So I want to see it from that angle too. So Nigerians should hold their calm as those people that are battling it should battle it to the end. Thank you. God bless you, Nigeria. Bless you as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for calling. 99.3, hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. What's your name? Sandra, well done. Thank you. I don't know. Is Nigeria going backward or forward? <laughs> Do you know how many marriages have been contacted in that place? Hmm. Since 1970, I got married in 1978. Okay. Are they now telling me that my marriage is null and void? Just because somebody just went to bed last night, woke up this morning, started giving us all this kind of shit? What is going on? The federal government is senior, is senior to local government. So why is that place existing in the first place? They should even put that place down. So if they don't want people to get married, it should be from their next marriage something not what people have done in the past this is wrong what kind of country are we in for god's sake are we are we in public what is going on it's so annoying why ah, good afternoon good afternoon thank you for calling big question why i'm sandra ezekwesili you're listening to the big three on hard facts on the big three we start with the th with three of the biggest stories of the day and then we move on to other stuff from four and then five at five o'clock i want to hear what you think about assisted reproductive technologies um surrogacy um ivf what are your thoughts about about um um you know those miraculous things they're miraculous in my opinion but what do you think 5 p.m that's when we'll have that conversation don't miss it we'll take a break right now when we come back let's talk about the bbc africa eye investigative report about the black axe gang in nigeria this is nigeria info 99.3 live spot 360 presents the live spot
years are over. The music must play on. Rev up your business breathing with new marketing realities. Join industry intellectuals and air guests at yet another quarterly virtual summit by Marketing Edge, the darling number one marketing and advertising magazine. The summit theme, Nigerian advertising industry reform, to be or not to be, will hold virtually on the 16th of December, 2021, between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. GMT. It's a new dawn in the Nigerian integrated marketing communications sector. Come and engage with industry leaders, players and gladiators as they project and dissect the future of the Nigerian advertising. It's another history waiting to happen. Register now at www.marketingedge.com.ng Be there. Marketing Edge, promoting the brand idea. Life is good for you. Eating well, getting enough sleep, spending time with friends, and saving money because you never pay charges to run your bank account and making up to 25 free transfers to other banks from that same account every single month and getting a free visa debit card delivered to you free of charge and free of card maintenance fees what is good for you Kuda microfinance bank is good for you now accepting requests for the brand new 100 percent free Kuda visa card download Kuda on your app store open an account and get free banking for life and if you need to speak to someone at Kuda microfinance bank just call zero one Six three three five eight three two. Lunch Pod 360 presents the Lunch Pod X Festival. Six days of multi-sensory experiences and live music that will keep you excited, engaged, and entertained. This multi-day festival will run from the 16th to the 21st of December with electrifying performances from your favorite multi-award winning headliners. Wizkid, Timur Tabe, Spinoff, Team Squill, and more. Also featuring NZ Republic, a pop culture spectrum curated event for teens between the ages of 13 and 21. Spaces, dance, art, and music. It's, it's all, all going down live at the brand new Ultra Innovative Live Spot Entertainment Center, Lagos, Nigeria. Visit LiveSpotNation.com to get your tickets now. At Live Spot X Festival, there's something for everyone. Live Spot X Festival is powered by Live Spot 360, supported by Razor Ray, Pepsi, Amstel Malta, Nano, JMG, Media Partners, Cool FM, Wazobia FM, Live Spot X Festival. Six days, one place. When you hear the song, I swear the cannot. Years are over. The music must play on. Rev up your business breathing with new marketing realities. Join industry intellectuals and air guests at yet another quarterly virtual summit by Marketing Edge, the darling number one marketing and advertising magazine. The summit theme, Nigerian advertising industry reform, to be or not to be, will hold virtually on the 16th of December, 2021, between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. GMT. It's a new dawn in the Nigerian integrated marketing communications sector. Come and engage with industry leaders, players and gladiators as they project and dissect the future of the Nigerian advertising. It's another history waiting to happen. Register now at www.marketingedge.com.ng Be there. Marketing Edge. Promoting the brand idea.
Google Play and App Store. Available only on the iWatch. Glory to God as the return of Apostolic Revival's Roar Networks in her 7 billion souls global campaign presents The Overflow. Avalanche of the Spirit and Revival. Date Sunday, December 19th, 2021. Time 3 p.m. Venue, Echo Hotels and Suites, Victoria Island, Lagos. Ministry, Pochi, Pat Uwaje King, Chigosia Wisdom, and Elijah Oyelade. Hosted to Pastor Paul Emmanuel. The Condi. Transportation to and from venue is free. For inquiries, please call 706 171 Apostolic Revival Fire is here again. And dry bones shall rise again. The Overflow is powered by. Raw Networks. Media Partners. Who was of your info? What is good for you? Eating well, getting enough sleep, spending time with friends, and saving money because you never pay charges to run your bank account. And making up to 25 free transfers to other banks from that same account every single month. And getting a free Visa debit card delivered to you free of charge and free of card maintenance fees. What is good for you? Kuda Microfinance Bank is good for you. Now accepting request for the brand new 100% free Kuda Visa card. Download Kuda on your app store, open an account and get free banking for life. And if you need to speak to someone at Kuda Microfinance Bank, just call 01-633-5832. Not the only new clothes they make this season, sweeto. Na kundapo they make jollof a full potto. Chicken, good day for sure. <laughs> but waiting go complete the collabo this season. Now when you arrange the new Go TV super package, make love for full house for everybody. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> the new Go TV super package. Now be correct gift for this season. Oh. You get extra super channels like Africa Magic Oven, Kicks, TL Novellas, WWE, Funny Channel, etc. etc. Oh yeah, rush go upgrade to Go TV Super today with only 5,500 naira. Make your family enjoy this super season. Go TV Super. Nigeria Info. Your number one station for talk. Let's talk. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. Our second story is the latest BBC Africa Eye investigative report. As you know, BBC Africa Eye brought us the uh, Sex for Grades documentary, for example. They also brought us the Codeine um, uh, Addiction uh, documentary as well. And this, their latest one, looks at the Black Axe Secret Cult. Which was, uh, which has really morphed from a campus confraternity to a global organized crime syndicate. The team visited Lagos and Benin to see how the gang operates day to day. They talked to street thugs. They talked to vigilantes who are fighting them. Onyabo, I think Onyabo is in Lagos. They talked to a lecturer in Benin who claims to be an ex-member of Black Axe who killed many people for the gang. They also talked to a political operative in Edo State who claimed to have used his ties to Black Axe to help a past governor win his elections. But you know the most shocking part of this documentary and its findings? Nobody is shocked. Nigerians on social media are saying, yeah, we know this is what happens. For those in who went to Uniben, they're like, oh, this is, you know, a Tuesday in the university. They're saying that anyone who says they're surprised is either just pretending or maybe never went to a Nigerian university. They're saying that a documentary claims, the, 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 the documentaries claim that members uh, of the Black Axe and other confra groups have penetrated uh, most private and public institutions is true. And they also say that the Edo state uh, politics is not unique. They believe politicians in most states use cult groups to win elections and this relationship gives the cult groups the confidence to commit other crimes between elections patronage 
By the way, the documentary also talked about these groups setting up franchises in secondary schools to catch them young. That part was especially triggering for me because of um, Sylvester Oromoni's death and his family's claims that his killers were trying to force him to join a so-called cult. We don't know what cult he was. they were trying to make him join, but um, you know that's what um, his family claims happened. So let's say for a moment that all of this, this documentary, let's say that it's common knowledge for Nigerians. It leads me to ask, how come we let it get this far? How did we get to the point that these cults and their activities are now just part of the status quo? Back in 2019, almost every week, I was reporting a cult clash here on The Big Three or on Checkpoint or on Community Report. Ikurudu was always on fire. Aja was always on fire. These groups operate more or less out in the open, and yet they evade justice. So how did we get to the point that they're just part of our lifestyle now? And is it changeable? Is it too late to change it? Could we change it? How do we go about changing it? If indeed they've penetrated so many points of power, how do we unpenetrate them? How do we eject them? Can we eject them? Is it possible? 01465-7190 for women. For men, 700 Nine nine three nine nine three. Yes, you can still talk to me about our first story. What do you uh, think about the ruling from the federal high court saying that the federal government cannot issue marriage licenses and what that could potentially mean for people like that caller who called before the break telling me that she got married at the Equity Registry in 1976. So what is what does this mean for her marriage? How should this ruling affect affect married couples? What do you think should happen here? Were you married at a federal registry? Talk to me. 0700-993-993-993. Hello. Thanks for calling us. Hello. Yeah, this is Joy. Yes, this Hi. is Joy. Hi, Joy. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, uh, Sandra, hmm? I was asking my colleague now, I said, would Nigeria ever be okay again? Hmm. Would Nigeria be good again? Hmm. Because the stories you hear every day keep making you think, like, if Nigeria will ever get it right again. You see these um, courses you're talking about, mm. they come with different cadres. We have the local ones. During the lockdown, if you remember, we had those, the one million boys mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. huh, those ones are in the local form. Mm -hmm. We also have the sophisticated ones, that's those for the rich men children. Mm -hmm. We have those ones. We have the ones for school. And the, the, the painful part is that our politicians use these people during um, election periods, you know, to perpetrate. Uh, 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 do whatever things that they want to do mm -hmm. during the uh, election mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. So all these things, when you put them together, you begin to ask yourself, where are we heading to? Now it has come into even secondary school. The other day in Ugu State, we had um, uh, school children stole, uh, stole the DPU, you know, mm. and broke his head. And are you saying that our government are not aware that we have things like this going on? If not, if not that they are also using them. We have some of our senators, Okay, who were also uh, uh, take over courses or our courses and now become uh, um, what they call them. Uh, I forgot what I've, I've lost that word. Mm. But we have some of them that are in the Senate, okay, sponsoring these boys because they were once with them. You mm. understand? Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk, now talk about the registry, government, not um, um, uh, uh, this marriage or whatever. I begin to ask myself, is it that they were not aware all this while? Is it that they're not aware that it's the local government that are supposed to be in charge? And you allow this thing to test for a very long time. Nobody checked, nobody did anything. It's quite unfortunate. We are just a laughing stock to other nations. Thank you. Thank you, Joy, for calling. 99.3, hello. Sorry about that. Call back if you can. 99.3? Hello. Hello, good evening. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Alex. Hi, Alex. Yeah. Okay, um, as regards the cult incidents and everything uh, that's happening in this country, uh, this country, I would always say that this country is a scam. Hello? Okay, I'm listening. Yeah, okay. Uh, number one, I am a boat uh, driver, and I picked up 
a rider <coughs> from uh, their jar Agri. Okay. Okay, the policemen stopped us mm-hmm. and they took us to their station. On the way going, the policeman that entered into my vehicle mm. was like, okay, pointing out, okay, you see this guy, he's one of the uh, top men in another court. Pointed another one, this guy is another top man in another court. All these guys are on the street okay. as Agbero, collecting either one tool from um, this Okada or from boss or anything. Mm. Was a policeman was pointing it to me. Then, um, in, as well, you then see, uh, what's it called? He down made a sign with the rider I picked, uh, noticing that, okay, ah, the both of them are in the same scene, qua. Mm. That then tells you that the forces also knows this uh, cause. So what are we then fighting? So, fight? so is it a lost cause? Do you think it's a lost cause? Do you think we can undo this? Or are we just, you know, is this just our reality now? We're the country that has gangs and we have these gangs with members in all corridors of power and there's nothing we can do about it. It's our reality now. No, um, I would say it's our reality now, but we can still do something about it. All right. Thank you very much for calling. We've got Helen on WhatsApp who says, Honestly, this new development about Ikui Registry and the likes should take effect on subsequent weddings and not affect previous weddings done before now. It wouldn't be fair to allow the lack of due diligence on the part of our government to affect the citizens. <laughs> Honey, have you been sleeping? Uh, the judiciary should be reasonable in its rulings in matters like this. Helen, thanks for your message. Sandra, it's very simple. The ruling cannot be retroactive. All marriages conducted before the ruling will remain valid. Okay, Sandra, we all believe that government uh, is a continual. So what did you mean when you said that this is not this administration's fault? Okay, OB dot from VI with that question there. Sandra, these ideas, uh, solutions that you're spewing are some of the things that federal government should have made following this unfounded declaration fiat. Our government just behaves like a headless chicken. Uh, this is absolutely preposterous. To me, it seems they just wake up daily and think, hmm, what can we give these people to chew on? That's a message from Tosin Oyedele. Tosin, thank you very much. When a country that claims to be a fed to be a federalism and at the same time have elements in the system that want the federal government to usurp all the powers of other units of the system. That is why it's not surprising that we have the federal government still running primary and secondary schools in this country when the most important functions are left undone by the federal authorities. It's a pity and shameful that we are still struggling with issues of the strata of government that should conduct marriages. Steve Vinnie Janney King with that message there. President Sandra, welcome back. I missed you. On this judgment from the High Court, it's good news for we men who got married at Ikui Registry. The door is now open to go for new adventures. At least we can legally tell a new babe that we're not married. <laughs> Buy her from Ikeja. Of course it's a Yoruba man. <laughs> Okay, Danny Jago says, uh, well, okay, yeah, you're talking about an entirely different story. I don't know what story that is that you're talking about. Well, thank you for your, mes- for your message. Um, Sandra, my take on this matter is that a copy of the judgment should be sent to all the embassies in Nigeria so that they can recall all the people that have left Nigeria on contract marriage back to Nigeria so that we can all enjoy the Nigeria we have all created. Our judges have been drinking fearless in the recent days. The kind of judgment we get in Nigeria, eh? You didn't leave your name, but thanks for your message. All right. Um, the lawyer that gave judgment on the case should be disqualified as a lawyer. You mean the judge? Okay. Is he saying that all the marriages conducted since the inception of the place should now go back to local government for another one? We don't even know our priorities in this country. God will from Ogunfanjo. I am sure I murdered that. I apologize on behalf of that place. But let me quickly bring you our final story because I'm a journalist and any time a journalist uh, um, is in the news, um, I have to bring you that story, you know. Uh, This particular one claims that the police arrested him yesterday for printing a true story. And that's our final story. Fisayo Shoyongbo, he's the founder of the uh, Foundation for Investigative Journalism. He um, is also known for his undercover investigations, like the time he got into the prison system. Back in August, he published a story on the FIJ website titled, Ebunike, head of Abakiari Pro Panel, joined others to approve one billionaire for fake police camp projects. 
The subject of the article is DIG Joseph Ebunike. The story claimed that three years ago, when Ebunike was commissioner of police in charge of budget and finance, the force decided to build these camps in local government areas where insecurity was high. The idea was to help maintain a police presence close to where bandits were operating. The camps were earmarked for local governments in Kano, Benue, Plateau, Bauchi and Katsina. FIJ claims that Ebunike approved the payments for the construction. But three years later, when FIJ visited the areas, they found that no camps have been built. That's according to their story. And FIJ claims that they have sources accusing Ebunike of working with contractors to siphon the money um, uh, 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 without doing the work. Siphon the money without doing the work. Even though his office was meant to pay them based on milestones achieved. Yesterday, the police invited uh, Shayombo. And he claimed that um, he was invited to answer a defamation accusation. In a Facebook uh, post, he said, quote, I have just arrived at the force headquarters, Abuja, to honor an invitation from the monitoring unit of the Inspector General of Police. They say my name and phone number featured in an investigation that they are conducting. The decision to come was straightforward. I am a law-abiding citizen who has committed no crime unless journalism is one. If there's no update on this handle by dusk, it means I have been unjustly detained. I will be sur surrendering my devices now, end quote. And we didn't hear from, uh, from him for the rest of the day until FIJ posted on Facebook last night, quote, we can confirm that our founder, Fisai Oshiyombo, has been released by the force headquarters. He was released on bail at exactly uh, 6.26 p.m. today and is to return on January 13, 2022. Our only offense here is that we published a true story, end quote. And perhaps to make their point that they believe their Ebunike story is true, FIJ has republished the story with the title Republished, the story for which force headquarters is after FIJ. Now the police are yet to comment on this situation despite requests from multiple media houses. So we're keeping our eye on that story. That's the situation with Fisai Yoshoyombo, uh, the FIJ and the police. And I want to know your thoughts on it. You can still talk about the other two stories, but we've got just two minutes before another break. At four o'clock, we'll bring you community report. At five o'clock, what do you think about IVF? What do you think about surrogacy? I want to hear your thoughts on the subject. 99.3, hello. Hello, good afternoon, ma. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? Welcome, Ikechuku. Because you are if they know that the man is at fault, the publisher, and let the police take them to court. They should start. They should stop gagging, the gagging Nigeria and intimidating us. And I told you last two weeks that we are not. We are fearless. Let them take him to court. And okay. Concerning the police issue, my mama, my papa, my mama, my mama, I think seventy-seven. Mm. I not tell him he said they are going to dissolve my mama and my papa marriage. Did they marry? Oh, did, 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 did they marry in Ikoi? Did they marry in Ikoi registry? Uh, yes, they married in Koyi, so let them come and dissolve. Let them come and tell me some bastards as, as they have dissolved it. <laughs> no. Oh, sorry, I thought you were done there. But thank you very much for calling. 99.3. Hello. Hello, thanks for calling. Good afternoon. This is my little king. Okay, we've got one minute for you. Okay. Sandra, mm -hmm. it's a pity that a journalist has every fact and every evidence yet. Yes, the officer of the said they to investigate the issue, to investigate what again. The money they be stealing is enough to give a policeman good money to do their job. For the country I'm talking about, Sandra, mm. I have said it before. You arrest a court chief, and only one focus will release that person back to the street. What they are trying to do? More members will join the court. More violence again. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you very much. All right. We'll take that break. When we come back, Chukudi Ezugu here with you, bringing you Community You Report. Um, uh, we've got like 35 seconds. No, let me not risk it by reading messages uh, from social media. But at 5 o'clock, I really want to hear what your perception of assisted uh, reproductive technologies um, uh, what, you know, is. What is your perception of, 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 that, of what I consider uh, a medical miracle? What do you think about it? 5 p.m. Come, let's talk. Set a reminder. And uh, don't forget, 5 p.m. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili on social media. Don't go away. Glory to God. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. 
subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.